All right, today this is just a brief review of old school conventions still apply to writing, even though we've gone from typing documents to the digital age. Um, just remember that all, all formal papers or projects should have titles. The titles should be original. You can do something clever with your title, like have a play on words or something. Academic titles tend to have colons in them. So, Ten, academic titles tend to be long with colons in them, and of course, other kinds of writing can have any kind of title, play on words, or however you want to do it. Let's remember some of the basic basics. You want to remember to put your name on your paper. Uh, it needs to be identifiable as a general rule. Where the name goes depends on which convention you are using. As a general rule, you want to double space all your writing in a formal paper. And don't forget about capitalization. In the age of texting, I know it's, I guess it's easy to forget, but the first word of a sentence needs to be capitalized and the pronoun I needs to be capitalized. Formal names are capitalized. Um, sometimes I see strange you know, unusual terms like capitalized for some arbitrary reason that I'm not sure of. So the number one thing is be consistent. And then the number two thing is be sure to follow the convention consistently throughout the document that you're presenting. Don't forget about page numbers in multi-page documents. Um, depending on which convention you use, there will be a rule for where the page number goes. And another thing to review is the point of view. POV. In three words, point of view. Every story has a point of view. It's being told to us by someone, a narrator. But who is that narrator? Just to mention that you are the narrator in your own writing. So this Khan Academy video is like made for younger people and um, to teach them how to read strategically. But remember that your writing is an act of communication and that you are in total control of it and that you are actually narrating the piece of writing that you produce. So the reader is desperately looking to the writing to see who is speaking. And so as a writer, you can manipulate the point of view to have a more effective message. A lot of the choose-your-own-adventure books that were popular when I was a kid use second-person point of view, but they're not as big as they used to be. Imagine a guided relaxation recording when you think of second person. You are calm. Your breathing is slow and even. You are sitting on a bench, looking at the ocean. The ocean is calm, and so are you. It sounds like it's giving directions to you, the reader. It definitely sounds like it's giving directions, and that's why it's so not appropriate for most writing that um, would be done in an academic setting. Uh, just be sure that it's being used very carefully and intentionally if you do use it. And Another thing to review is the point of view throughout the writing. Are you being consistent with the point of view? So here I'm talking about first person, second person, and third person. Um, it needs to be intentional, intentional and consistent. Remember that if you're writing a formal academic essay, the second person is usually inappropriate because it sounds very conversational. Um, when using numerals, uh, you want to be sure to be consistent throughout the document and look up how numerals should be handled within whichever convention that you're using. As a general rule, 
don't start sentences with numerals and spell out numerals that can be stated in one or two words. Okay, so numerals. Numerals, let's say, numerals. Let's say I'm using MLA format, MLA um, formatting. Let's say I'm not doing a research, but I, I'm not doing a research paper, but I'm just going to use MLA to format my paper, my writing. Rules regarding the use of numbers. Okay, so I'm looking here, and this one actually is an ED, uh, I'm sorry, an EDU website, so that might be good. I know the owl Purdue generally is um, reliable. I'm going to go to this one because it's got APA rules in it. In it too so all right the rules regarding using numbers in AP and ML style, MLA style APA use words to express any number that begins a sentence title or tax heading all right let's look down here and see what MLA says because I said I was writing a paper MLA the general rule regarding the use of numbers is to use words to express numbers in one or two words one five thirty six ninety nine one hundred and represent other numbers by numerals. Here are some other MLA rules regarding numbers. Hyphenate compound numbers from 21. Okay, so you see what I mean about the rules? There are these very specific rules, and if you're doing something formal that's being submitted for review, first of all, be sure you're consistent, and then be sure that you're using the rules from the convention that you chose. If you're using MLA to format your paper, then you do the whole thing with MLA. The, if you have a work cited and you do that, the title, all that. If you're doing APA, you do the whole thing. There's Chicago Styles, another one that his, the history teachers, I think, like that one a lot. I happen to like Chicago Style a lot, too. But whatever you do, you just want to be consistent and you want to follow the rules. So that's especially true with numbers. Italics are is another important thing to look for. Be sure that uh, your writing is being consistent with the use of italics. Entire works like newspapers, movies, books, and albums, CDs, DVDs are italicized. Episodes, chapters, articles within these larger items are not italicized. They're usually put in quotation marks. But these rules are easily look upable, so I encourage you to do that. Italics can also be used for style, so for example, we can really change the meaning of the sentence by using some italics. So the sentence, she went to the store for milk and eggs, uh, we can italicize she, and then it's like she went to the store for milk and eggs, okay, as opposed to maybe somebody else that's in the writing. We could instead italicize store to add some emphasis. Um, she went to the store for milk and eggs. She didn't go to the chicken coop in the cow barn. So you see what I mean by using italics for style. You can use it to add emphasis. Control and limit the use of pronouns. Uh, proofread to be sure that it is clear to the reader which he or she or they, the writing or writer, is talking about. You and yours should be avoided, avoided in formal writing. Use of pronouns should be intentional, and you just want to be sure you're being consistent. Quotation marks are used for titles of smaller works within larger works, like a chapter within a book, or an article with a newspaper. Quotes are also used for style and emphasis, and when quoting another. You use single quotes for quotes within quotes. So you could really change the meaning of a sentence too by using quotes. Uh, she was very special. She was very special. She was very... She was very special. She was very special. How about uh, Sue? Let's see, sorry. Sue came into the room. Okay. Sue 
came into the room. Okay, who is Sue like a fake name? Is that a pseudonym or what's going on with Sue? Why is it in quotes? We need the larger context. But it sounds like it's kind of like her fake name or something potentially. And this is just a reminder about apostrophes, the possessive apostrophes. Uh, let's not forget about those. So this is just an exercise I do in class sometimes. Um, obviously, I strongly recommend using Microsoft Word or Grammarly because it will point out where you need an apostrophe. And so I can just go through here and right, accept these. So that's why I'm always really surprised when I receive a paper that has these kinds of errors because why not use a resource that's available to you? So uh, the thing where people do get a little mixed up is with the it's. So it apostrophe s is only when it is it is. There's a reason for that. I'm looking for an example here. Here's one. It's such a beautiful day that I've decided to take something up. It is can be situ can be substituted there so we know it's an apostrophe and so on. So just be sure uh, to double check. This is one of the things you proofread, proofread, proofread for. Sentence grace and clarity are super important and each sentence should be read. Often the first version of a sentence that a writer creates needs some revision. My sentences sure do. Let's take a look at a sentence that could use some revising. With all of your hard work as a photographer, will really pay off to other people would think photography is all about pointing a camera and shooting. That is not the case. Photography to others would say photography has a meaning. You could be at the same scene for hours creating the moment all about pointing a camera and shot. Photography goes far beyond it like no other. Okay, so this sentence could be a little bit clearer. Okay, so what can we do with this sentence? Uh, First of all, it's got some uh, problems with agreement, and it's an awfully long sentence. Let's look, one, two, three, four, five, six lines long. I mean, long sentences are okay as long as it's intentional. And it's got some second person stuff going on in it. So I really think that we're going to need to separate the sentence out into multiple sentences. So let's try getting rid of the number first. Okay, get rid of this too. With all of your hard work as a photographer, okay, let's just generally see if we can get the meaning to this clear. Hard, let's see, hard work as a photographer will ultimately pay off. Okay, there's something. I think I didn't change, the, I did change the meeting. Um, some might think that photography is all about pointing a camera and shooting. Photography is a hmm. Okay, let me try to fix this portion. A photographer could be at the same scene for hours creating the moment. A gift for a for a talented photographer snapping that picture. 
is like creating a meaningful story. Okay, so I'm not saying that this is the best revision that ever happened on the face of the earth or anything, but I think that it's an improvement. Hard work as a photographer will ultimately pay off, although it might not be apparent. Great photography isn't just pointing a camera and clicking. A photographer could be at the same scene for hours creating the moment. For a talented photographer, snapping that picture is like creating a meaningful story. Okay, so that's an example of revising for grace and clarity. Here's another shorter example to look at. Um, this is one that I think, you know, it's okay to have long sentences and, stu and such, as long as they're actually saying something within the longness of the sentence. So, let's see. All right, I'm trying to get this in the center. Okay, so let's take a look at the sentence. Personally for me, I know people around me will crack a joke or two at me when I forget something or say something incorrect. They'll say, oh, must be from all those concussions or something along the line of that. Okay, so we have a few sentences here, at least one. Personally for me, I know people around me will crack a joke or two at me when I forget something or say something incorrect. They'll say, Oh, okay, well that is an independent class. And so, person for me, I know people are, okay. They'll say, oh, it must be from all those concu concussions or something along the lines of that. All right, so I, we don't need to say personally for me because we already know that you're talking about what you know or you wouldn't write, write about it. So let's see. Those... around me and I don't know people's really vague friends maybe friends around me will crack a joke or two you don't need to be at me because I think it's apparent that it's at me those friends around me we're assuming there's a larger context here will crack a joke or two when I forget something or say something incorrectly okay They'll say, these friends, maybe that's a little bit vague, these friends will say, and then that's not introduced grammatically correct, you need a, a comma, and then the quotation marks. Oh, must be from all those concussions, or something along the lines of that. I'm not sure if that's really, really sounds super talky. And um, this, if this came from a paper, then, which I remember that it did, it needs to be a little less conversational. So I think I'll just end it there, that sentence. Something, we'll say something like, so if we want that same feeling of that they say, not these exact words, but something like it, we can do it that way. Okay, notice the period goes inside the comma. Oh, these friends will say something like, and I would actually capitalize this here, because you're, introdu you're introducing like what someone said. So that's an example of revising for grace and clarity. Sentence by sentence by sentence by sentence. Comma splices and fused sentences are grammatically incorrect and need to be attended to before submitting for a teacher for evaluation or a professional context. Uh, so in English, there's four kinds of sentences, and these are divided up basically by whether or not or how many independent and dependent clauses they have. A simple sentence is one with just one independent clause and no dependent. An independent clause is a clause of words that can stand on its, low, on its own as a grammatically correct sentence. And there's two examples for you here. Both of these are independent clauses and they are simple sentences. 
compound sentence is a sentence with multiple independent clauses but no dependent clauses. In order to be grammatically correct, if a compound sentence, a compound sentence must have some the correct kind of punctuation joining the two independent clauses. Otherwise, we end up with a comma splice. So there's two examples here of appropriately punctuated um, compound sentences. The clown frightened a little girl. She ran off screaming. These two clauses could be independent. They could be sentences on their own. But because they're joined by a comma and an and, they make a compound sentence. If there was just a comma here and no and, no conjunction, then it's not grammatically correct and it's a comma splice. Complex sentence is a sentence with one independent clause and at least one dependent clause. So take a look at these two examples, very basic. Can you, can you tell where the independent clause is and where the dependent clause is? Which part of the, se the sentence, this first sentence, which part can stand alone as a sentence? And it's the second part here. She discovered that the lemonade stand was 32 cents short. That can stand alone as a sentence. So we know that after uh, Mary added up all the sales, that is an independent clause because by itself it is not a complete sentence. When an independent clause and a dependent clause are joined together, they make a complex sentence. And it's okay to use a comma with those two types of sentences. Complex compound sentence is a sentence with multiple independent clauses and at least one dependent clause. I, I hope I said independent clause. Multiple independent clauses and at least one dependent clause. So look at this sentence here and say, where is the independent clause? Where is the dependent clause? So what portion of the sentence, like before a comma, could stand by itself and be a sentence grammatically correct in its own? Okay, we know the zany but savage wit of the novel packs an extra punch. That set of words could be a sentence and it could be correct on its own. So that's an independent clause. Catch 22 is widely regarded as Joseph Heller's best novel. That is a grammatic, if there was a period here, this could be a grammatically correct sentence. Because Heller served in World War II, that is not a sentence in itself. So it has to be a dependent clause, which the novel satirizes again doesn't make sense by itself. Usually when something starting starting with which, you know, use extra caution because you probably, you might have a dependent clause. Anyway, so knowing where the dependent and independent clauses are in a piece of writing can help you know if your sentence structure is grammatically correct. Fragments. Fragments are usually pieces of a sentence that are not properly connected to another existing sentence. Fragments are an error. Fragments are clauses of words that are punctuated like a sentence, but in fact don't meet the requirements of what a clause of words needs in order to be a sentence. And that's it. Thank you.